Australia is the world's driest inhabited continent and in the past decade farmers have been struggling with severe drought and unpredictable weather. I'm Juliette Pearce and I'm in South Australia to visit a company that's come up with a new way to grow food using abundant resources of seawater and sunlight. Located on the arid stretch of land bordering the Spencer Gulf in Port Augusta lies Sundrop Farms. There's the greenhouse. This sustainable greenhouse is now in its second successful season of tomatoes and capsicums. Hey Juliet, how are you? Welcome to Sundrop Farms. Good, thank you. So Philip, why did you come up with this idea? In agriculture, which uses about 70% of the world's fresh water supplies, um, we're starting to face shortages in water. Greenhouses are more water efficient than growing in the field. The issue with greenhouses is that they're very energy intensive. So the reason we came up with Sundrop Farms is to address the water and the energy component head on. Sundrop does that by making use of the area's most abundant renewable resources, sun and seawater. Is there a benefit to the shape of these? Yes, most definitely, yeah. Um, the shape is in such a way that uh, it tracks the sun over the day and every ray of sun that hits the mirrors is then focused on this tube. In the tube you have thermal oil, the oil is then sent through a piping system to finally heat up the water in the heat storage tanks. The thermal oil heated by the sun is pumped to a heat engine where it converts seawater to steam. This drives turbines which generate enough electricity to provide Sundrop with most of its electricity needs. That equals to, yeah, a thousand light bulbs, um, which is more or less 50 households. That's yep. a lot. <laughs> yes. Secondly, the hot oil heats more seawater, which is piped directly into the greenhouse to provide heat through the cold desert nights and winter days. More seawater, also heated by the oil, enters the desalination plant where it condenses to form distilled, salt-free water, which the plants need in abundance. It's a bit like your bottle from your fridge. If you take it out of your fridge and you put that on the kitchen table and condensation forms on the side, that's what we mimic here as well, but a bit more efficient. 10,000 litres of water is needed each day to feed the greenhouse, but that's a tenth of what's needed in traditional farming. So this is the purest water you can get. <laughs> Thanks. Very nice. <laughs> you have to say that. <laughs> What's great about this process is that after desalination, you're left with brine and brine's salt and chemicals. And all of this is actually recycled and put back into the agricultural industry. Hi, Dave. You're the head grower. That's right. How are you? Good, thank you. That's good. I'll just get you to sanitize your feet here. Wow. Is it a horticulturalist's dream to work in this environment? Well, you know what? The great benefit of having a closed structure like a greenhouse is you're able to control the climate, you can control the level of insects and diseases much better than you would with traditional farming. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! Sorry. Whilst my lack of trolley control is obvious, Every element of production is a fine-tuned machine and nothing is wasted. Seawater is even used as a natural insecticide. I was expecting a big pest. No, the most dangerous pests are going to be the smallest pests. When needed, seawater is also used to cool the greenhouse, trickling over cardboard pads where its evaporation brings about natural cooling. Let's see if I get it right. It's not too hard. Very good, very good. <laughs> the master. Yeah. Only how many to go? <laughs> how many are you selling per week? Uh, a good average over the 12 months of the year is about 5,000 kilos a week are being shipped out. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. You know, it, we're looking at about um, three and a half to four heads of tomato per square meter, and each one of those heads will produce one of these guys right here each week. 
The yield is 15 to 30 times higher than conventional field production. Do you probably sick of them? No, no, no. <laughs> you never get sick, sick of a great tasting tomato. <laughs> With nature on their side and pretty tasty tomatoes, Sundrop Farms is developing a greenhouse 40 times the size of this one. It will be in production by 2013.